More. Ladies and gentlemen, my guest at this time is an indie pro wrestler for North uh, Dakota. He's an indie pro wrestler, and he is a contestant from the TNA Gut Check Bracket. Joining me right now, he goes by the name of Savage. He's joining me right now. What's going on, Savage? Hey, how's it going? Doing real good, and uh, thank you for joining me on Triple Threat Wrestling Radio this evening. Hey, thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. Absolutely, man. And we'll get into the gut check and the voting situation in just a little bit. But uh, we're going to focus on your wrestling career first. Uh, with that said, how did your wrestling career got started? Um, well, basically, uh, I live up here in Minot, North Dakota. Um, you know, I was uh, listening to the radio one day back in uh, 2009, I believe it was. And uh, heard a little commercial on the radio for Northern Outlaw Wrestling. And they were holding tryouts. Do you have what it takes to be a pro wrestler? So I figured, well, I'm going to give this a shot, you know. Ever since I was a little kid, I grew up watching wrestling. So, you know, it's something I knew about. You know, I've been watching it my whole life. Um, so I gave it a shot. And, uh, you know, the, the powers to be in Northern Outlaw Wrestling decided to... Uh, invite me back next thing you know a um, couple months down the road I had my first match with uh, six percent body fat Rob James he's out of uh, he's out of Minneapolis area um, that was my first uh, that was my first singles match I had a couple tag matches prior to that but that was my first singles match my big singles match so that's kind of how it got started I mean I've been you know athletic my whole life really I just never really got into into pro wrestling other than watching it on TV as a youngster you know so uh, I'm pretty grateful that you know things happened the way they did living up here in North Dakota it's kind of desolate for pro wrestling so I'm glad that uh, Northern Outlaw Wrestling came around otherwise you know I wouldn't be doing it and before you had your first match uh, now you, all, a lot of entertainers, before they get on stage, before they perform, whether whether it's music, whether it's playing sports, things of that nature, people do tend to every now and then get nervous, maybe get the butterflies performing in front of audience and stuff. Uh, did you get nervous? Did you get the butterflies, you know, before having your first ever match? Definitely. Uh I don't know, it's kind of hard to explain. It almost didn't seem real, but, yeah, it was definitely the, the jitters, the shakes, you know. Uh, I've never been one to uh, do things in front of crowds, you know. When I was younger, I just that's something I, I wasn't comfortable with. But, I mean, I've adapted to it pretty well. I mean, after, you know, my first couple matches, it really didn't bother me much anymore, you know. I mean... I, I get pumped, go, go, come, you know, coming through the curtain. I get pumped when I hear the crowd and, you know, I hear my music hit and, you know, I, I really don't get those butterflies anymore. But, you know, in the beginning, I think everybody does. You know, I don't think there's a wrestler out there that uh, that didn't get the uh, butterflies and the jitters and all that, you know, their first couple matches and, you know. So... Obviously, you are a contestant for TNA Gut Check and um, the whole bracket. And as of yesterday, they have suspended uh, the voting for the opening round. Uh, no word of when uh, the voting will be back up and running. Uh, you being a contestant and all, and you, you're on social media trying to get your votes in and everything. And I mean, how do you feel about them suspending the uh, voting for the opening round? Um, you know, the way things were going in my bracket, I was in bracket 14. Um, since they opened the polls, I was initially in second place. Then I got down in the third, which I was fine with, you know, because I, I, I was still going head-to-head -head with the other guys. And, uh, I don't know, I kind of noticed, and a lot of people, everybody noticed that all of a sudden people were going from zero votes to 20,000 overnight, you know, and I think the people at TNA obviously noticed it too. Um, 
how I feel about it. I think I think it's a good thing that they suspended the votes. I don't think everybody was voting honestly. Everybody knows that, that, that people were allowed to vote more than once. There was no limit on that, which is fine. But for somebody to get 20,000 votes in a matter of seven hours, it's impossible. I don't care who you are. This is indie pro wrestling. You don't have 20,000 people to vote in a matter of seven hours. I don't care who you are on the indie scene. It just isn't going to happen like that when Chance Prophet had 20,000 votes in a matter of three weeks. He's a pretty popular guy. You know what I mean? And it took him that long to get that many votes. For somebody else in my bracket to get 20, 25,000 votes in seven hours is ridiculous. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure that out. You know, and I think TNA, I think TNA seen that, you know. I don't know what was going on in the other brackets if there was stuff like that going on, but I know in in bracket 14, I don't know what happened, but people were getting votes, you know, overnight going from zero to 25,000, you know. I hope that TNA gets uh, something set up with a poll that, that allows one person to vote from, from an IP, IP address, that's it. You know what I mean? So that it's an honest vote, you know. If they truly want what, what the people want, if that's who they want to put on TV, on Impact Wrestling, then that's the way it should be. I definitely agree with you as far as um, them needing to have one vote per IP uh, address. That's definitely would be the uh, that's the obvious solution at this point. And I guess I'm kind of wondering, you know, by the time they bring the voting back, is are people still going to have the votes that they have, or is it going to be reset to uh, to zero? What do you think as far as the votes that everyone has as of right now? What do you think is going to happen? You think that people are still going to have the votes, or or they may end up being reset to zero? You're you're asking if it's going to start from zero? Yeah, if you think it's going to start reset to zero, or you think they're just going to Okay. Yep. Uh, yeah, I think it should start over completely. I mean, everybody start at zero, you know, because who's to say, you know, you can't start, you can't start the, the brackets at four guys have 30,000 votes and other guys have 700 and other guys have 1200, you know, it's got to be a clean slate. If the voting is going to be fair from beginning to end, it's got to be a clean slate. You know, that's my opinion. I mean, All right, well. and I know I, I had a lot of people, I mean, uh, I had a lot of people voting. I got family down in, in Arizona, and, you know, they had all their friends voting, and, you know, they're all wrestling fans, you know. Um, everybody that I know, even people I don't know in North Dakota were voting for me because up here in North Dakota, Northern Outlaw Wrestling, who I, who I work for up here, is the only pro wrestling company in this state. So when they see one of their superstars in in something big like that, they get behind it because there's some loyal wrestling fans in North Dakota, and and we're the we're the we're the top dogs up here. There is no other pro wrestling company in this state. So, you know. Well, it's just a matter of waiting to see at this point to see where they go from here. Um, so, but once TNA got checked decides to bring back the uh, voting for the opening round or I guess for the for the remainder of the, the competition we'll definitely let y'all know and make sure you vote for this man uh, once the voting is reinstated um, bracket number 14 I believe you, that's the bracket you on yeah that's the one that's the one I was in and I don't know if they're gonna have it set up the same way or what the deal is I haven't heard anything I got an email sent to me from uh, the TNA gut check, um, and it pretty much just said the same thing that their Twitter feed said uh, when they said that they suspended it. So, I mean, it was nothing really more in-depth with detail than, than what was on Twitter, you know, from the TNA gut check uh, Twitter. So um, that's all I know. I know as much as anybody else does out there about it. So, All right, so um, with... The TNA gut check situation on hold at the moment. 
Um, why don't you go ahead and promote some upcoming wrestling shows you're going to be a part of? <clears throat> March 8th and 9th here in Minot, North Dakota, Northern Outlaw Wrestling is having uh, their event. And it looks like, from what I've been told, I'm going to be in a street fight with the king of throwdown, Venom. He's another wrestler out of Minneapolis, Minnesota. Uh, me and him have been going rounds the past couple months, um, you know, over the Northern Outlaw Wrestling title, which he lost back in January. We were in a triple threat match, uh, me, him, and Mr. Incredible. Um, Mr. Incredible won the match. Um, so, you know, I'm out of the title. Venom's out of the title. But uh, we got some bad blood, and we're going to settle it March 8th at the Vegas Motel in Minot. So um, for anybody out there that's inter interested, they can check out northernoutlawwrestling.com. Um, they got NOW uh, TV on there, which is the Internet TV show. Um, you know, there's a lot of older matches leading up to what's going on. Um, we, you know, when Northern Outlaw Wrestling has events up here in Minot, it's always a two-night two -night event. So it's March 8th and March 9th. So, you know, it's it's a big deal up here in Minot when we, you know, when NOW has these events. So that's the next big one coming up. Um, I know there's another one in May here in Minot, and then, you know, I kind of do a couple things out in Minneapolis here and there. Oh, I see. I don't really have. <clears throat> so everybody check that out in March. Uh, Savage will be in action. Check him out. Support your local indie pro wrestling area, no matter where you're from, uh, there's more of the wrestling than what you see on TV. And just go out there and support your local indie promotion out there. Go out there and support. So, um, what do you like the most being a professional wrestler on the indie scene? You like the traveling? You like hanging out with, with the fans, interacting with them? You like uh, hanging with your colleagues in the locker room? What do you like the most uh, being a wrestler? Oh, you know, I, it's hard to say what I like the most because I like, I like every bit of it. I don't think right now that there's anything I can say that I don't like about it. You know, I, of course, of course, probably the, the, the top thing is the fans. I mean, whether, whether I'm up here in Minot and they're cheering for me or if I'm down in Minneapolis and they're booing me, um, it doesn't matter. You know, the, the fact that the fans paid their hard-earned money to come watch all the indie guys in the area, me included, go out there and perform for them, you know, to hear their reaction no matter what it is, it's, it's, there's just something about it that, you know, that, that's probably the ultimate thing right there is the fans, you know. I enjoy the, the, the you know, hanging out with, with uh, you know, the other guys and uh, traveling. I don't mind traveling. I like being on the road, you know. But the fans are the number one thing as far as uh, what I like the most. Who do you consider as influences in your wrestling career? Um, Sting. Sting is definitely one. Um, you know, I, I grew up in the 80s and 90s, so obviously Hulk Hogan. Um, Big Van Vader was definitely one of the guys that I used to look up to. I mean, I'm not nowhere near as big as him, but, I mean, in my opinion, he's the best big man to ever be in the business. So, you know, the things that he would do would just blew my mind as a kid, and I still watch a lot of his old stuff. You know, I just I enjoy watching it. Um, you know, those are probably, you know, obviously Macho Man Randy Savage. I, you know, there's just – he's one of the greatest workers of all time. I mean, it, it – you know, I, I continue continually watch some of his old stuff too, but those are probably the the, the top guys that influenced me. I got to throw Bret Hart in there too, obviously, but you know, for people that wants to um, get in touch with you or learn more from you um, as you go on with your wrestling career, uh, why don't you go ahead and promote your social media links: Facebook, Twitter. Or any other links people need to know. On my on Facebook, you can find me at Savage Wrestler. Um, 
if you find that and find the one that says Minot, North Dakota, I think there's two savage wrestlers out there. The other one is uh, like a clothing site or something like that. Mine will be the one from Minot, North Dakota. It'll have a picture of me as the profile picture. My Twitter is savage underscore wrestler. So you got to have the underscore in there, otherwise it won't come up. And then uh, for, for booking info, for, for any of the promoters out there that are interested in booking me, It'd be savage underscore wrestler at midco dot net. Um, that midco is M I D C O. Uh, you know, I got a I got a YouTube channel too. I got some of my matches on there, and that would be Nodak, N O D A K, Savage, and it should just pop up. You know, my channel pop up. You can just click on the link, and all my videos are on there. That's pretty much it for the social media. I mean, I got a Twitter and a Facebook and the YouTube channel, so. All right, man. Well, uh, I'm going to go ahead and um, let you go, but I want to thank you for being on the show this evening. Uh, best okay. Of su- best of success goes out to you, and uh, hopefully we'll find out more info on the gut check um, info so people can get the, uh, get back to voting fairly this time around uh thank you for being on the show savage and uh thanks again hey thank you for having me on i appreciate it you have a good night sir hey you too bye-bye right, bye-bye that was indie pro wrestler savage joining me here on uh triple threat wrestling radio i want to say hello to my friend uh actually my cousin for that matter dexter uh he's joining me right now what's going on dexter hope all is well with you um yeah, so I find that interesting that uh, with the whole gut check situation, um, obviously there was a lot of votes. I think I get I guess what was more confusion to me, I, I, people tell me you can vote once, and then that's it. And then people tell me you can vote more than once. So um, hopefully TNA can find uh, a poll. That will require you to vote once per IP address. That's the only way to go. And uh, some wrestling, some of the wrestlers have a huge popular following. And then there's some, well, I don't know. The suspect. So TNA, hopefully they can fix that. Uh, in about nine minutes from now, I will be joined with uh, Mickey Knuckles. She joins me in about nine minutes. <clears throat> and I got the two announcements to make about to, uh, about the show itself. I'll get into that uh, a little bit later in the hour. Uh, while I wait for Nikki, uh, Mickey for that matter, uh, I'm going to go ahead and recap SmackDown of last week. So... With John Cena deciding to challenge the WWE Champion at WrestleMania, that leaves the door open for the World Heavyweight Championship. And Booker T was going to look around to see who is worthy of facing the World Heavyweight Champion at WrestleMania. Obviously, before WrestleMania, we go through the Elimination Chamber. And... Booker T has announced 